Hello, everyone. I'm Jessica Bai from Energy Box. Anyaseyo. Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to join our today's webinar. Uh, we are the organizer from Energy Box. Uh, before we kick off our today's webinar, we want to special thanks our uh, sponsors, Goodway and the Sangra Floating. And, um, you know, in 2019, the government unveiled plans to build the largest floating solar power plant, which is expected to lead to a generation of 2.1 gigawatt of energy. The project is planned to be installed on the Samajan Sea Wall Deck, which is near the southeast coast of the Korea Peninsula. Therefore, floating solar projects expected to create a significant opportunity for the player involved in the market. The government just recently started to implement laws allowing corporate PPAs. From this, we are going to figure out Korea floating market and the corporate PPA market potential. Thank you all. Before we start our presentation, I would like to give you a quick review about who we are and what we do. Energy Box is a vertical media company dedicated to renewable energy. Headquartered in China, we are one of the top three most influential media in our domestic market to enhance business cooperation across land and inland and to promote green energy. Energy Box event held around the world, Pan Europe, South Asia, and South Africa, and Southeast Asia. Up to date, we had 20 plus events on record across the world. We are committed to submitting the traditional media marketing model, inspiring unique and professional customized team. And not only that, their existing sales consulting, project development, financing, webinar, meetings, interviews, and the peer to peer services. I would like to give you a guide about our today's webinar. It will be divided to two parts. The first part will be presentation and the panel discussion. The second part will be the Q&A sessions. Our today's agenda. Uh, first presentation will come from Mr. Kim Song Park and he's going to give us some quick review of Korea floating market and the PPA. And the second will be the Larry Kim is from Goodway Korea. He's going to uh, deliver and create a new area of smart energy. And the third, Sangro uh, Bloating PV is Korea is going to deliver a Sangro FPV Korea solution at Pulanli. And the, the third part will be our uh, panel discussion. And uh, it is um, um, present from India Green Power and, uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Evan from uh, Dr. Jory Long firm, as well as our uh, moderator from uh, Real Energy, Ms. Vincent Baker. The last part will be our Q&A sessions. And the audience, if you have any questions, you can just uh, uh, type the Q&A button and uh, leave a message. We will be coming back shortly. Okay, then I would like to give you uh, uh, let's check it out how many great speakers that we have by today. Their first speakers would like to um, clap your hands. Welcome Mr. Kunsung Park. He's the director of uh, Global Project Innovation and from KEA. And Mr. Larry Kin is managing director from Goodway Korea. And Mr. Corwin Yu, he's the regional manager from Sangro Floating. And uh, Mr. Gung Yong Hyung, he's the head of business development of uh, Asia Pacific region from India Green Power. And Mr. Evan is a Tory at law from Dr. Adrian LLC. Mr. Vincent Picker, he's growth controller from It Real Energy. And no more waiting. Uh, let's uh, clap your hands and we are coming our first speaker. And before he present, I would like to uh, give you who, uh, about an intro from uh, uh, Mr. Conson Park. He currently works as director of global project innovation at KEA. In fact, from March 2018, he has accumulated more than 20 years of experience in the KEA. 
He has extensive experiences in the area of uh, clean energy activities, energy sector planning and development, energy policy and strategy, energy sector project management. He received the doctoral degree in new renewable energy engineering from Tokyo University. He also studied sustainability at Harvard Extension School, held Master of Business Administration from Harvard International Business School, and a Bachelor of Science in Physics from Busan National University. And he's going to uh, deliver a overview of career, floating markets, and the PPA. Okay, uh, from now on uh, in Korea. So, 안녕하세요. Uh, 에너지공단의 uh, 박경순입니다. 오늘은 어, 플로팅 어, 마켓하고 PPA에 대한 오버뷰를 말씀, 뭐 일반적인 사항들을 말씀드리려고 합니다. 어, 뭐 크게 세 가지인데요. 어, 이제 알리 그러니까 어, 리뉴얼 에너지 3020 계획이 이제 현재 어떻게 진행되고 있는지. So current state of RE3020. 7년 12월 발표했고, 어, 약간 중심 제도인 RTS를 중심으로 말씀드리고요. 두 번째로는 이제 RE100이라는 제도가 이제 새로 올해부터 시행될 텐데 그뭐 어떤 배경이나 필요성 그 다음에 수단들이 어떤 게 있는지 말씀드리고요. 그 중에서 이제 그 서드 파티 PPA라고 제3자 이제 어 발전 뭐 계약 같은 게 되겠는데 요거에 대해서 어 잠깐 말씀드릴 이런 순서로 하겠습니다. 그래서 이제 3020 계획은 잘 아시다시피 어 태양광과 풍력을 중심으로 어약한 55기가 정도를 이제 더 2030년까지 어 추가하겠다는 발전량 추가하겠다는 계획이고 밑에 잠시 이제 보시면 뭐 크게 어 이제 as you can see in the chart. 그 다음 below the point is that we need a citizen participation. In Korea, we have productivity is 120 now. So we are looking to double the productivity in long term. So we need large scale projects. And you can see the short term projects plans, which the Korean government is currently working. And after that, the next office will come in for the long term plans. And in this process, the local government and the, the citizen participation is very crucial. Especially farmland, like acquiring lands for the projects. And after we've kicked off the projects in the beginning, We are trying to get the five gigawatt in step one, but 70% of the Korean land is mountain area. So carrying the land for projects is quite challenging for now. So as you can see, step one, And we can use the nuclear plants as we are getting out of the nuclear era. And also we are we can also focus on K water projects. As we'll discuss today. Like reservoirs. And as you all know, 
세만금 퍼즐 쓰는 중입니다. 뭐 어, 계속 그이 1단계를 스텝 1을 이제 가지고 이제 계속 확장을 해 나가는 And half step we are expecting to expand the projects that we've started in step 1 and we can also large scale pv and onshore wind farm and also offshore wind farm as well. As of 2017, after we kicked off the 3020 plan, uh, last year, Korean government stated that we're going to carbon neutral and after that this is this these charts shows how we've been doing in that regard so on the left is target on the right is achievement as you can see so the achievement was like 1.4 gigawatt as you can see, PV has been always overachieved. And 2020, at the end of the year, PV was nearly to 4 gigawatt achievement. As I've mentioned, PV has been always overachieving, but wind power is not as strong as we expected. So onshore land wind farm has been struggling in Korea a lot. And I've been discussing in regard of RPS. Uh, I should also share the IC weight factors as well. Due to the accidents and the various events, we've reduced the forest land. Uh, because of its potential areas and also economic efficiency, we also put like weight factors into different areas. So in 2017, we've had 93, 39% of mountain area it decreased to 32%. Because of the weight factor has been reduced. So, in result, in 2018, the building and farmland increased accordingly. So, these are the factors that are affected by the weight factors. As you can see, we're the future of offshore wind and PV will increase in the future. Uh, 
as I've mentioned, the local government is very playing very crucial role in this project. As you can see, in Chungbuk area, a lot of companies that, that manufacture cell and module, and in Gyeongnam area, they're, fo they're focusing on offshore wind projects. And in Donghae area, they're focusing on floating offshore wind. Ulsan is in Donghae area, so Ulsan city is focusing on offshore PV and wind farm. And as you can see, Jeonnam area is strong in PV plant. And also there are a lot of islands and so they're focusing on offshore wind farm. So floating solar, floating PV will be will play in various and important role in the future in various governments. So as you know, RE100 is also being implemented in Korea as well. And we are doing demonstrations and pilot tests to meet the standard of RE100. And we are preparing to, to start off this year. And these are the important factors of, in terms of PPA. But in terms of third party PPA, the CAPCO is the only, only one who can control the contract in both sides. And they're so purchasing RIC and equity participation and self power plant. As you can see, five different ways of PPA is available in Korea. So you can you can choose different ways of participating in PPA. And as you can see, third party PPA. So there's producer and purchasing part party. So Capco plays in the mediator in between. So you can see in the picture here. So in the future, we are, we are looking into direct PPA as well but we are only beginning this. So we need different regulations and we are waiting for the further instructions and regulations about this. So, so because due to the R RE, 3020 and RE100, the floating solar will play important roles in the future. In the part, uh, we are coming uh, Mr. Larry Kim from uh, Good Week Career. Uh, he's uh, going to deliver us, create a new era of smart energy.
and um, Goodway is a leading strategy thinking enterprise, which focuses on street research and the manufacturing of PV inverters and energy storage solutions with a cumulative installation of 23 gigawatt installed in more than 100 countries. Goodway solar inverters has been largely used in residential and the commercial rooftops, industrial and the utility scale systems ranging from 0.7 kilowatts to 250 kilowatts. Goodway inverters offer reliable option and excellent performance and well recognized by customers worldwide. Okay, thank you so much, um, Goodway support. Mr. Larry, are you able to share your screen now and start of your presentation? Thank you. Hi, Larry. Can you share your screen now? <coughs> Hi, Larry. Uh, could you, you allow me uh, to share my slides? Uh, I'm prohibited. Okay. okay. Uh, let me double check. Can you speak something? I cannot find you. Okay, I get it. The consecutive interpretation, which Larry Kim will speak, and then I'll follow up with English. Please go ahead. Larry Kim, 시작해 주세요. Yeah, 알겠습니다. Uh, 구디는 uh, 지난달 대구 그린 에너지 엑스포에 사상 최대 규모로 참가하여 성황리에 no. 진행하였습니다. Yes, we have successfully finished uh, and participated the Green Energy Expo last year, last April. Yeah, 전국에서 다양한 분야의 많은 분들이 구디 부스를 찾아오셔서 매우 의미 있는 시간을 가지셨습니다. It was very meaningful time because a lot of people all from yeah, all 다시 한번 감사드립니다. Have come uh, to to see and show interest in our goodie products, and, and thank you so much for your interest. The global inverter central inverter stream. Butter, Shanghai Stock Exchange에 관련된 해외 상장 법인입니다. 아, 네. Uh, I... yeah. yeah. So there are string inver inverter um and the other um other kinds and we are very focused on string inverters section and we are truly a global leader for uh good as a goody solutions. 네, 다음 장 부탁드립니다. So for the IHS. Uh, IHS, so we are 15% uh, of the market share of the global market as a global leader. And we are um, definitely showing great trend and growth in hybrid inverter section. Uh, 
또 굿디는 나 미국 제너럴 일렉트릭의 글로벌 파트너로서 미국 시장은 물론 남미, 오세아니아, 유럽 시장에서 제너럴 일렉트릭 인버터를 공급하고 있습니다. So we are also a supplier of a GE inverter global market, and not only for e, uh, GE, we are providing to Europe and Oceania and all uh, other continents that uh, to that recognize our product. Yeah, we are the only uh, uh, exclusive uh, licensed company to use a uh, uh, General Electric brand all over the world. Uh, 구디는 TUV 올 퀄리티 메터스 어워드를 6년 연속 수상하였습니다. So we have been awarded TUV All Quality Matters for 6 years in a row. 네, 이는 전 세계 인버터 제조 인버터 업계 최초의 기록입니다. And this is our first ever record that shows great uh, improve uh, great awards in 6 years uh, that no one has ever accomplished. 또한 EUPD 태양광 토프밴드로서 5년 연속 어, 6개 국가에서 동시에 수상하였습니다. 이 또한 so, 세계 인버터 업계 최초의 기록입니다. Yes, and another uh, break record. Uh, our history shows that for five years in, in a row, we have uh, awarded, we have been awarded six uh, awards from EUPD, um, the UPD section, and this is our first ever uh, achievement in the industry. Hana to sell uh, LG Group, uh, GS Group, Grigo uh, Enel, Siemens, uh, Bosch, Toyota, Coca Cola, and Kimiri, Hyopjo, and Wissimida. We're closely working with all the global brands such as Coca-Cola and Siemens and uh, all the uh, LG and all the um, name branding that you see on the screen. Uh, Good uh, in uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, a Yagi Chan Sambang Mung in Jugoni, Yon, Egypt Chilman de in Botter, Sangsana Sinon, Dungogel Kachuo is Mida. So at Goody, uh, more than three. Uh, um, 2,300 employees uh, have a capacity to produce 270,000 units of inverters. 500명 이상의 전문 연구 인력과 세 곳의 R&D 센터에서 나오는 기술력의 차이가 있습니다. We have exclusive distinction in technology with more than 500 experts and three R&D centers. 즉, 2018년부터 국내 시장에 양면 모듈에 특화된 양면 모듈형 인버터를 공급하고 있습니다. And uh, we are now providing the uh, both um, both sides of uh, modules, and uh, that is one body inverter. 또한 우리 인버터는 접속함 일체형으로서 다수의 KS 인증을 취득하고 있습니다. So as a one um, body uh, inverter, we have a multiple um, KS certifications. 어, 국내 시장에는 30kW, 50kW, 60kW 의 MT 시리즈 어, 100에서 250kW의 HT 시리즈를 주력으로 공급하고 있습니다. So we are mainly providing 30 kW 
50 kilowatt, 6 kilowatt in um, HT. Uh, I'm sorry, the the 첫 번째가 뭐였죠? 죄송합니다. MT, uh, MT series. And then we are also focusing on providing 100 kilowatt and 200, 250 kilowatt in HT. Yeah. 당사이시 모델 HT series 아, 그 소개 영상을 잠시 보시겠습니다. Let's watch a quick introduction video that introduces HT series. Yeah, 시간 관계상 uh, 짧게 줄이겠습니다. 구디가 공급하는 인버터는 uh, 양면 모듈과 체결이 가능한 양면 모듈용입니다. This inverter is the uh, both size module uh, usage. It's for bifacial modules and also is a uh, DC combiner combi uh, DC combiner uh, embedded. 구디는 uh, 접속함 일체형으로서 어 uh, 접속함을 따로 설치하실 필요가 없습니다. So with this bifacial module, you do not have to install a separate uh, installation. Uh, KS 인증 취득, uh, 양면 모듈의 뒷면 출력까지 커버하는 인버터의 용량, 최대 입력 전류의 150% 이상의 퓨즈, uh, LCD 디스플레이 등, uh, 최근 들어 강화된 한국 전기 안전 공사의 사용 전 검사 기준을 충족하고 있습니다. Okay, KS uh, with the multiple approval and certifications from KS, this bifacial a uh, bifacial um, module can also produce the back sides of the production and also with the 150% capacity on the field and with the LCD display this will well over uh, do um, Overperform uh, that goes beyond the standard of Korea Electricity um, Organization's uh, standard. 기타 한국 전력, 한국 전기 안전 공사 등에 요구되는 어, 다양한 기술 사항에 대해서 이미 충족하거나 철저히 대비하고 있습니다. We are we are already meeting the expectations or goes beyond. The expectations that requires from KEPCO and KESCO. Uh, 그 외에도 uh, IP66 uh, 또는 IP65 방수 방진 등급으로 uh, 염분 및 uh, 수분을 차단하여 내부를 보호하는 기능. With the IP66 and 65, it's a, it's a waterproof uh, and it's salt uh, salt defection proof. Yeah. Okay. 알루 마그네슘 합금 매 알루 알루 마그네슘 합금 매 전기집진 분체 도장 외함. So is the aluminum uh, alloy yes, cabinet uh, which has uh, electrostatic uh, powder painting. 
technology to prevent from uh, rusting. 또한 어, 영하 30도에서 어, 영상 60도까지의 정상 작동 온도 범위. This will regularly and very normally operate from negative 30 Celsius so holding... to 60 Celsius. Yeah. 또한 어, 내부 습도 감지 기능 PID. AFCI 기능 등. Okay, it it will sense the internal um, density of uh, of dryness and and it will uh, and it also embeds with PID and AFCI. The internal humidity uh, uh, display. Uh, and uh, PID, AFCI 등 uh, 육상형, 지붕형, uh, 수상, 염해지 태양광, 영농형 태양광을 위한 제품의 차별화가 이미 되어 있습니다. This is uh, this already has this extension function to prevent all the uh, harmful UVI uh, and um, the harmful uh, materials from sunlight and the natural uh, effects. 한국형 그린 뉴딜, 어, 태양광 인버터 및 태양광 모듈의 급속한 기술의 발달 등 어, 국내 태양광 시장은 어, 그 일대 변환기를 지나고 있습니다. Korea industry, Korea industry for uh, the light of uh, the sun, uh, sorry, so the light rays of the sun the sunlight generation energy is definitely going through a rapid uh, changes with the approved and changing uh, standards. Hello. Corwin Yu, he's the regional manager from Sangro uh, Floating. Sangro Floating is wholly owned subsidy of Sangro Group, which has a 24 years R&D and a production experience in PV industry area. We own an experienced R&D team with a number of experts applied more than 100 patents concerning floating body, auger system, inverter booster, floating platform, system on M and leads, Chinese floating photovoltaic technology standards. Global market share remains top one for three consecutive years. Sangro floating, we always devote ourselves to be the reliable floating system solution supplier. Let's clap your hand, we are coming Corwin and the kick off his presentation, Sangro floating career solution planning. Hi Corwin, are you able to share in your screen now and start a presentation, thank you. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can you well. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, Corwin, you uh, share the language of the translation, so that the translation will be able to translate. Thank you so much. Mm. Okay, can you hear my screen? Yes, very well. Thank you so much. And you can start your presentation now. Okay, thank you. Mm. Uh, Chen Ping? Yeah, okay. Okay. Great. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Kerwin. I'm working in Sangro Floating Sales Department and uh, I'm in charge of uh, Korea Market. Uh, it's my pleasure to have this uh, webinar with you all. Uh, my presentation is about our uh, career market solution and the planning. Okay. 이렇게 웨비나를 통해 만나게 되어 영광입니다. 오늘 한국 시장에 맞춘 선구로의 수상 태양광 발전 솔루션과 계획에 대해 나누겠습니다. Sangro uh, Floating established in 2019, uh, 2016, and uh, we have our own manufacturing, uh, and we can produce uh, 8 megawatt, 800 megawatt, megawatt products average year. And we also have our own 
and the deep team and the laboratory. Uh, as of now, we have already gained more than 100 uh, patents and completed the supply more than 1.1 gigawatt a floating system to the world. Uh, most of them are located in Asia, such as China, Malaysia, Thailand, and so on. So also we are the number one market share supplier in this field. In this field. And uh, Sangaru FBV have started in Korea market since uh, 2019. And we have made a serious uh, preparation including local designing, installation, and manufacture. Uh, we could provide not only equipment, but also installation services if needed. Uh, we, we will do our best to supply competitive solutions and uh, services to our uh, career market. Yes. And uh, the next is our products and the service uh, and the solutions. Uh, as you know, uh, for a career, career market, there are several, several uh, crucial uh, questions need to be solved. Uh, we, we need to focus on this key point, such as uh, sea water uh, corrosion, high wave, high water wave, and the strict environment uh, requirements. We have completed our solutions to solve these problems. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Uh, this is our format structure and uh, uh, include two parts, uh, the support layer and the floating layer. And uh, we, we, the first, uh, we refused to uh, partially expect excessive strong single floater or partially excessive strong uh, support layer. Uh, make sure the, flow, the whole array keeping high stress in the in-plane and the flexible after plane like a soft blanket floating on the water. Yes, this is our uh, design philosophy. Um, I mean, uh, we should uh, choose uniform, uh, continuous and flexible uh, floating structure, not the one with a discontinuous or excessively strong impartial error, not this kind of uh, uh, floating structure. Because we have to make sure the floating array have enough uh, flexible to adapt to the valve effect for the long term of the valve effect. And the partially ex excessive strong or hard structure is not good and the valve uh, situation. And, the, and these are of, uh, advantages of our solutions. As I mentioned uh, just now, uh, the zero to corrosion is a key point for this uh, floating structure. And in, in our solution, uh, all the material structure, metal, uh, metal structure uh, made from aluminum alloy, which has a good uh, anti-corrosion to the sea And the floaters are made from HDPE. Uh, this kind of material is uh, insensitive to zero to corrosion. And this is the test of uh, aluminum alloy in CX environment and uh, the sea water condition. From the result, uh, we can see that uh, this kind of uh, material can adapt to the CX environment and even in the sea water condition. It can work well over more than 16 years in sea water condition. So we are very confident for it on the uh, seaboard condition. Uh, here are the service life uh, performance certificates of HGTPE. In fact, uh, we added some special HGTPE modifier via manufacturing. It is of patent. Uh, that will improve uh, the performance of the HGTPE. Uh, we have conducted the accelerated UV test on our product, the way was that we lo lo locate, uh, loaded the total 25 years uh, calculative uh, UV radiation onto the material in period of time. The report says that the material 
calcium strength and the impact retention rate is still above sixty-five uh, percent after lighted the total radiation. And uh, in our practical practical application, uh, the earliest floating project have been operating more than six years. The floaters are work well, and as I know. Uh, there are some um, other floating project. Uh, they are operating over 10 years. And then the, the floater are work well too. Uh, here are the tests about the environment performance. And the report uh, stated that uh, the HPE is a kind of food, food grade material and without, without a, any uh, toxin. And here are the tests about the project side boat quality. The floating array has no any effect to the boat quality in the project site. So uh, above is our solution uh, to solve the seawater corrosion and the environment, uh, environment uh, requirement. And the next is our solution to solve the high valve problem, the high, high valve. Let's let's uh, uh, have a look a uh, short video. Okay. Uh, this video uh, is the offshore breakwater working video. Breakwater, yeah. We can see uh, the valve is huge, but it was prevented by the breakwater. It was prevent prevented. The valve inside of the breakwater becomes smaller and uh, cameras, yeah. That is to say, uh, preventing huge valve, valve is possible in floating project, in practical, yeah. And however, uh, it doesn't mean that we can build offshore FPV project. Uh, the reason is that uh, I think uh, there are many another difficulties for offshore project. Yeah, but we can build uh, such pro uh, project on the lake, uh, big lake, or including uh, seaside lake, for example, sea mangi. Yes, uh, in that moment. Uh, it still needs this kind of breakwater. And this is of valve dispersion measures and, uh, the, and its uh, uh, simulation and uh, uh, analysis. Uh, it is uh, clear to see that the valve becomes smaller after it goes through the breakwater. This is of analysis and uh, simulation of the breakwater. And this is the detailed design, okay? The breakwater designing. And this one is uh, our conceptual designing of cement in project. Uh, even though the water, is, the water arrow is not, is, is very huge. But it was not a real. It, it was not a real offshore error. So uh, we can set up breakwater to prevent the valve and the pre protect of a floating array. 따라서 설비를 보호하기 위한 방파제를 설치할 수 있었습니다. The floating array can also protect the valve to start. Then there are more. 또한 그 FPV 자체적으로도 파도 수면 효과가 있습니다. 더 많은 설비를 설치할수록 파도 수면 효과는 커집니다. 결국 전체 수역의 파도와 약해지는 효과를 기대할 수 있습니다. 저희가 제공하는 서비스를 보시겠습니다. 또 부상 시스템, 또 앵커 디자인, 현장 설치 가이드, 필요에 따라서 설치 서비스도 제공하고 있습니다. The following is our entry design introduction. Uh, 보시는 것은 앵커 디자인 uh, 과정인데요. 
또 현재 여러 디자인 회사들과 협력 중이며 각 지역에 맞는 구조 분석을 진행합니다. 또한 analysis process wind node it is it is a important load for the floating project 
if you can share their screen now. Oh, yeah, I can see this. Can you guys see it? Stop. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, everything real. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Vincent, for sharing, and uh, Jessica and uh, the folks at Energy Box for hosting. I'm very pleased to be here. My name is Guyun. I'm the head of business development for Asia Pacific. Um, we've heard a lot of uh, corporate introductions, so I'll try to keep mine as, as brief as possible and jump right in to talk about the corporate PPA market in Korea and at least share with you kind of what we understand so far and what our recommendations would be uh, going into the future. Um, uh, just for the Korean uh, audience, uh, um, I think for for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the people, it might be better for me to do the presentation in English. And then, if there are questions, I'm happy to to answer uh, in in my mother tongue. So um, I'll jump right in. Actually, before I jump in, I just want to throw in some some quick figures about Korea. So uh, among the OECD countries, uh, Korea has one of the highest intensity of fossil fuel in its generation mix, over 75%. I think it's ranked number four or five. Uh, and uh, it has the lowest penetration of renewables, at least the renewables how most of the world defines it at 4% at the end of 2019. So we have the highest fossil fuel, lowest renewables penetration. And the other interesting tidbit is that uh, the, the weight of demand, electricity demand, is highly skewed towards industry. So 51%, so more than half of the electricity demand in Korea is for, uh, is for industrial users. And then another 20% or more comes from the services sector. And residential is only 12%. Uh, and this is no, no accident, right? Because Korea is a very export and manufacturing oriented economy. And so it's very energy intensive. So what all of this shows is that there's a lot of a lot of ground that Korea has to co cover in terms of greening its generation fleet. But the flip side, is there's a lot of opportunity if we can tap into the industrial use of electricity to green that. And one of the ways to do that is through these corporate BPAs. So I think, I think this topic is a very timely one. And, the, and as, as you will see, uh, the Korean government is, is, is also moving towards that direction. But before I go into this, for those of you who I'll be very quick. I'll just breeze through, just to give you a sense of it. So NL uh, is, a, is a global uh, energy group, electricity utility. Um, and you know we, we are vertically integrated. So we're into generation uh, and distribution grids uh, and to energy retail. So sales uh, of, of, of electricity, but recently more also into services. So in each of these segments, uh, we have a very significant uh, presence, if not an outright uh, a global leadership uh, position. Uh, I will I will skip. And then uh, looking at NL Green Power in specific, and NL Green Power is the renewables generation division of NL Group. Uh, and you know we are proud to to claim to be mm, one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, uh, player in terms of installed capacity. You can see that we have almost fifty thousand megawatts uh, under operation. And you can see that uh, we also have a very um, uh, ambitious growth plan in the next uh, two to three years, mainly focused on wind and solar and very evenly distributed uh, around the world, including uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, we announced last November a very ambitious 10 year plan uh, to add an additional 100, about 100 gigawatts of renewables. That means we have to be adding about 10 gigawatts annually. So that's making people like me and the company as business development very busy to originate, develop, uh, and then hand over projects for construction and operations. Uh, and how do we do it? We do it by really be, uh, by being present in all the commercial renewables technologies. So that's wind, solar uh, storage, hydro. Uh, we, are, we are also a global leader in geothermal, for example. And now we're also moving into green hydrogen. And across the value chain, in terms of how, uh, on, in terms of the project life, we are present from the origination of projects uh, to the commercial structuring, which, which is a topic uh, for today. And then uh, in terms of execution, engineering, construction, and then how, and then how we deliver those projects into op operating and maintaining those projects for their lives. 
and in terms of energy management, energy trading. Uh, and just to give you a snapshot of kind of what we did last year, we're very proud to have to have commissioned more than 3,000 megawatts uh, around the world. And also it was a banner year for us in terms of contracting new projects, in terms of uh, winning tenders, uh, signing PPAs, uh, whatnot. So that has also been in, in the tune of, uh, of, of four, four gigawatts. And as I told you, our ambition is to be growing at 10 gigawatts. So we still have a lot, uh, a lot of ground to cover. Now, uh, part of that success has been our, our ability to contract our projects with power purchase agreements, these long-term contracts to sell energy, which is very critical for renewable energy. As you know, you know, wind and solar, these projects are very capital intensive in terms of capital that needs to be spent upfront. Uh, but then once you build it, uh, the operations and maintenance is, is, is relatively low compared to your standard uh, oil, gas, uh, coal, or, 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 or even nuclear. So because you have to make all of that upfront investment in the first one, two years of the project, you need to have that steady, you know, 20 year, 15 year uh, revenue stream for these projects to be uh, bankable. Now, uh, one big trend, as you can imagine, is, is the rise of what we're calling corporate PPAs. Because before this, a few years ago, it was really just selling to governments or government owned monopoly utilities. And now in many of these markets where there's been liberalization of the market, we have been uh, able to sell directly to our corporate industrial commercial and industrial customers. Uh, so half of our PPAs is now basically being signed with these CNIs. And you can see some of the, the big brand names that have partnered with us really around the world from the United States to Brazil to all the way down to, to, to Australia, uh, which is one of the markets that I cover. So, uh, so we have been at the, at the forefront uh, in this space on, on corporate PPAs. So in our, in our experience in this, in this market space, uh, here are some of the, what we call the key enabling factors uh, that determine the success of a corporate PPA scheme. Uh, and I, I broadly categorize them into, into four buckets. So one is the energy market characteristics. So you need to have a competitive, uh, a, a liquid and competitive market uh, where you can either hedge or whatever project, uh, pr products that you're, uh, that you are um, uh, marketing or, 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 or that you were trying to sell to your clients uh, or to be able to have, uh, you, know, I, you know, strong bilateral contracts uh, that, that we can have uh, the confidence uh, that, that we can uh, uphold. And obviously, you know, long-term contracts will be something that would be great. So, so between having, you know, really just financial hedging products like virtual PPAs to having, you know, physical direct uh, PPAs you need to have a well-functioning uh, and competitive market, whether it's on the wholesale level uh, or, or on the retail level. And it's on this point that I think uh, Korea uh, needs to work on because it doesn't have a, 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 a I would say, competitive functioning wholesale or retail market. And we'll get, we'll get into this a little bit more, more in detail uh, in the next two slides. The second bucket is what we call renewable claims. So um, because uh, corporates need to make sure, need, they want to be sure that whatever that they're buying is going to be certifiable, that they are actually consume, buying and consuming renewables, uh, they need to have what's called an EAC scheme. So this is the uh, Energy Attribute Certification Scheme that is reliable and robust. So they cannot be buying something later finding out that it doesn't count towards their renewables targets, right? So this is very important. And then having a fungible REC market obviously is also important in case something happens, they're able to monetize those RECs uh, or, or, or even for the, from the seller sides, uh, such as ourselves. The third bucket is, is, is the grid. And uh, this I understand is, is, a, is a very uh, topical theme that's being discussed uh, within Korea in, in relation to the, the Korea RE100, which is who's gonna be paying for and who's gonna be charged how much is gonna be charged on, on, on the use of the networks. And the reason this is happening is because the Korean market had been fully regulated and really there has not been any exercise in terms of you know, what is the cost to the grid of, of connecting uh, generation projects because no generation had been charged uh, this fee. Uh, and, 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 and renewables rightfully so are considered to be the ones creating the most disruption when connected to the grid. And so this, this topic is coming. 
There is no easy solution to this, uh, and we can get into detail uh, later. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that there needs to be a very transparent and fair rule in terms of how this is going to be governed. And it also goes to um, the connection process and also how you're going to deal with and how, uh, how contractually grid congestion is going to be governed. The last bucket is PPA bankability. So these power purchase agreements need to be bankable. They need to be bankable for us. They need to be bankable for, for, for the buyers. And so um, having a, 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 you know, having a robust scheme to, to figure out the credit worthiness of both counterparties in the, in the transaction is important, as well as having clear rules on, on termination. So if, if one, one party walks away, what is gonna be the protection, uh, what's gonna be the protection for the, for the party that is, uh, that, that, that is left hanging? And then of course, uh, guarantees on delivery and payment will, will be very critical in, in having some trust on, on these power purchase agreements for corporates. Um, Mr. Kim earlier uh, briefly went through this. So th this is the five schemes that was uh, announced by uh, the government, as far as we can understand, uh, a couple of months ago on five possible ways that they are proposing that Korean corporates can meet their KRE 100 targets. So the green premium, I'll be very brief. So the green premium, as far as I can understand, is where Kepco uh, will be uh, auctioning uh, volumes for which they will be receiving. They will be receiving the green premium from the CNIs. And in, in return for that, Kepco will be supplying the renewable e electricity. And then on the other side, Kepco will be the one that actually buys the physical renewable electricity from, from the generation plants. The third party PPA is basically Kepco being the intermediary where they will sign, be signing back-to-back -back contracts for the energy and for the RECs. So, so Kepco buys uh, electricity and the RECs from the power producers and then probably sells with a slight margin uh, to the CNI customers. So it's basically a pass through with some kind of a mechanism in between. Uh, the third one is where the CNIs uh, get their uh, renewable energy obligations filled by basically buying the RECs from the Korea Energy uh, Agency from a, from a platform that still needs to be uh, developed. Uh, the fourth one and the fifth one, I really don't consider to be a, a real KERE 100 scheme because the fourth one is just basically uh, the, the CNIs buying into or having a, a, a partial ownership of the renewable energy project. Uh, but that, that, that is one that has been uh, proposed. And the fifth one is self-generation, from which I understand is, is basically a behind the meter scheme where, I don't know, on the rooftop or on the facility of the CNI uh, customer, they will be building and then owning, operating, and then absorbing all that renewable energy that has been that has been produced. Now, uh, uh, concurrently, there is what's called the direct PPA that has been proposed, and this one was legislated uh, in March. So this is a little bit more recent, and potentially this one. Uh, has, is, uh, is governed by a higher law because it, it was a legislation that was passed. And the government is working, uh, is uh, apparently working on regulations uh, to, to bring this to fruition that is uh, expected in, in October. And here, there is no TEPCO in between uh, the seller and the buyer uh, and the renewable electricity uh, generation plant will be entering into a direct contract with the CNI off-taker where they will be selling the renewable electricity. And in this case, there is no REC issued or REC transferred uh, to the buyer. Now this obviously, uh, it, this would potentially be a, a big change for the current electricity system because this would be the first time, it, it would be a real departure because this would be the first time where uh, KEPCO uh, is not the buyer and seller uh, is not the single buyer, uh, and where uh, you will have multiple contracts and you have multiple buyers uh, buying from multiple sellers. Um, and, and you know this is something that will need mm, uh, a, a host of issues that need to be solved. And, I, and we op and we 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 listed uh, a couple of them here in terms of backup supply. How are we going to govern excess power generated? Uh, how are you going to um, manage uh, settlements? 
And again, as we mentioned before, uh, who's going to pay for uh, and how are you going to calculate the network usage fee? So these are things that need to be uh, that need to be discussed. But if, if this is done well, uh, this could potentially uh, bring about change that I, I frankly believe is, is 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 well overdue in Korea, particularly now that Korea has these ambitious plans uh, to be to be uh, introducing uh, renewables in a very significant way uh, in, in the Korean market. I will end by uh, showing you this slide. Uh, I, I admit it's a little bit arbitrary, but I try to kind of not put points, but try to, to, to give you an idea of what I think would be the scoring of these different schemes uh, based on these, uh, uh, based on these uh, three um, uh, cri uh, broad criteria. And on the left, you'll see the, the different schemes. Of the five schemes that was in, introduced by, by the Ministry of, 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 of Industry, I left out the equity participation because I didn't really feel like that was a real renewable offtake scheme. Uh, and, then I, and then I added the direct PPA. In terms of criteria, um, so the first one is, is implementation, meaning uh, when you implement it, um, what would be its cost impact to the system, and I wanted to focus on the impact on grid connection. The second one was on participant engagement, meaning how engaged are the participants into these schemes? So how much skin in the game do they have? And how does that impact, say, the, I would say the adoption uh, of these schemes? And then the third one has to do with market access. Now, uh, having you know, free you know, um, you know, bilateral contracts or even third-party PPAs or, or having some kind of a direct interface between the buyer and the seller, you really need to have a, a, a liquid market where market participants have the confidence to participate and uh, where they can also try to mitigate some of their risks, either by hedging contracts or by or, 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 or other kinds of um, ways that they can manage their volatility or their imbalancing risks. So um, to put a long story uh, short, I think the, the green premium uh, works very well for Kepco, to be frank, because they get the premium, uh, and then uh, they're the one that um, uh, buys from the market and then uh, uh, supplies it to the um, to the CNIs. Um, but there's really not a lot of interaction with the buyer and seller, and it really doesn't address this question about how you're going to. Um, be managing uh, the grid in terms of, you know, if, if, there's a, if there's a weak connection point, I mean, this doesn't provide that signal that there needs to be a network upgrade or there needs to be additional cost that needs to be paid by someone. And of course, there's no wholesale participation aspect to it. And I would say uh, in some respects, it's very similar also in the case of the REC purchase. Self-generation is a little bit of an outlier as well uh, because here, you are obviating, you are avoiding the cost of the grid because it will be most of the time behind the meter on the side of the corporate uh, player. And the buyer has all the engagement of it because it will be on his, uh, it would be on its uh, facility and they would theoretically be off taking almost all of the energy that's, uh, that, that's there, but there's no say game uh, for, for the seller because they're not, they're not involved. So that leaves, uh, the third party PPA and the direct PPA where, as you can see, you know, these are the ones that really kind of create uh, what I've been describing as, as a real market uh, on the space, where uh, it does lead to real projects being developed because uh, in the case of the DPPA, it might actually become a direct supply, physical supply. Uh, but even in the case of the third party PPA, even though you have Kepco in the middle, it does, uh, it does imply where a real project will be delivering energy for a particular customer. And of course, there's direct uh, participant engagement, but then the flip side is you you know it, it does involve uh, uh, a lot of homework by the Korean uh, regulatory uh, bodies to 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 come up with this wholesale um, market that will allow this kind of participation. So I will end there, and then if you have questions, I'll be more than happy to to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guyun. That was very interesting and a very great summary of uh, of the Korean uh, schemes, and uh, I think quite helpful to understand how they work. Um, uh, even, are you there? Yes. Hold on. Okay. Let me...
share my screen and um... well after hearing the international business side from guyun uh, it would be also interesting to hear a very different perspective on the same market uh, mr ivan ungsuk lee is an attorney at law a doctor and edu lc and we look very forward to your presentation even sure um Apologies, um, trying to get access to. Yeah. Mm. Hi, Evan. Yes. Yeah. Trying to get. Are you able to share a screen now? Um, I'm trying to, but... Yeah, you can just click on the blue button and share your screen. I've done this before. I don't know why it's not working, but... Because I, I'm trying to do this on my tab. Um, Or uh, can you share from your side, maybe? There's, you know, I can time. hear you. If I'm, see, even if we struggle getting the presentation up, do you think we can do it uh, purely verbal? Or do you have a lot of uh, yes. nice graphs so, for us? I don't really have a lot of diagrams or <laughs> pictures to share. I'll try to keep, I'll, I'll do it uh, verbally. So, um, um, hello, my name is Evan Lee. I am a partner of the International uh, Practice Group and Infra Energy Group at Teiru Gaju, LLC. And uh, before I joined this firm, I used to work for I used to work for Vina Energy as their in-house counsel and um, investment and BD manager and director. So. If it's okay, I'd like to proceed uh, with my presentation in Korean because that was what I was um, told. Yeah, I chose on you That's okay, right? Yeah. So I'll try to keep it within five minutes for the sake of time and our discussions. Um, 제가 오늘 발표드릴 내용은 거의 대부분 앞서 발표하신 정구윤 님과 겹치는 내용이긴 합니다. 그래서 I'll try to skip all the um, Even, I want to help you. Um I can I can sure. help you to play your PPT slide if you oh, like. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> sure. Just Sorry. scrap a minute. Okay. Yeah, 
What is the subject of your PBT slide? Is it? Uh, it's KRE 100 and um, I think it was the means to promote um, corporate PPA. Oh, yes. Oh, it's just okay. corporate PPA in Korea. Okay. Is it a PPT slide? Corporate yes, PPT it's PPT. just a PPT slide. PPT slide. Not a PDF. Okay, I got it. Okay, great. Let me have you now. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Um, yes, that's right. in Korean, but I think I sent you another one in English, but uh, you can speak English. I will um, share the English uh, vision with our audience later. Okay, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, as I just previously mentioned, I'll, I'll try to skip all the um, redundancies because um, I believe most of the subject matter that I am about to present was covered in the previous uh, presentation given by Mr. Chung. So um, if we could move on to the next slide, please. And the next one. So for our international um, participants, what this slide is supposed to cover is um, the difficulties of developing um, solar projects in Korea, the reasons for that. And um, this comes from my previous experience as the um, BD uh, manager slash director at uh, Vina Energy Korea. And um, the, the most crucial and critical... Um, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. 어 잠시만요. 원래 그 영어 자료를 발표하시기로 하셨던 한국말로 네. 그럼 원래 하시던 그 대로 그렇게 하실까요? 그게 좋을 것 같은데요. 아 예예. 네네. 네. 네. 음 네네. 오케이. 그럼 영어를 영문 그 슬라이드를 틀어주신 거죠? 그리고 제가 한글로 발표하고. 로. Yes, even. So, uh, do I continue in English or? Yeah, can you in English? Can you oh, English? Good. Okay. Um so uh the the first and foremost reason um solar project development is difficult in Korea is because um the returns are unattractive. First of all, um for solar projects, we're given low multipliers. Yeah, or yeah, can you share in the screen there? And um, the REC prices, we believe or we understand, are falling, are continuously falling in, in the spot market. And uh, for solar projects, we believe that Jenko's, as per um, the policy set by Motie, are restricted from entering to private bilateral um, REC plus SMP purchase agreements, which were referred to as PPAs in Korea in the past, well, and still in the present. And um, the DEVEX and the CAPEX um, keep on getting higher, although they're supposed to fall because, not because of the construction price itself, but because of the land price and um, the high community compensation price. And also, although this is implicit and has never been explicitly um, announced by Motier or any of the government agencies, we believe or we are told that there's a local content requirement when it comes to um, when it comes to entering into certain types of PPAs or REC purchase agreements. And furthermore, uh, we are seeing local regulations turning away from developers as local distance, distancing regulations in the local, uh, set by the local governments are being strengthened. And that is um, hindering the development of large scale or utility scale solar projects in Korea. 
So um, given all these difficulties, we do believe that the corporate PPA or the, the third party PPA uh, set by the, um, the, the Korean RE-100, uh, the, the Korean RE-100 may be able to provide a uh, solution to these difficulties or problems. So um, please, can we move on to the next slide? I'll try to skip all the introduction, all the slides that go through the intro introductions of what RE100 is and um, what types of implement implementation methods um, exist or are provided by the regulations because that was, as I said, was covered mostly in, well, well covered in um, the previous uh, presentation. So I, I think we can skip the slide. We can move on to the next slide. Um, just to give you a short brief um, 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 explanation on the history of how KRE 100 was um, adopted or introduced into Korea. Um, as was, as um, Mr. Park has, had presented in his first uh, presentation, uh, the government had been preparing for the adoption of KRE 100 uh, since um, we've been told 2018, but um, it has taken a while until the government finally took uh, uh, the measures to implement the or enact the relevant regulations into the law and um, the enforcement decrees. So uh, starting, starting last year, we've seen uh, the government finally implementing uh, these laws and regulations, and the government has started uh, trial outs of these different types of, of implement, implementation methods that were that are given through the RE100 scheme. And um, that's where we are right now with uh, the direct PPA um, with the um, with the direct PPA uh, laws being um, enacted recently. Um, can we move on to the next slide? Thank you. And um, I'll, I'll skip all the details of the different um, impl implementation methods or um, implementation means and just give you a brief um, update on uh, where we are regarding um, the green premium and uh, the third party PPA and the REC um, purchase, because I think this will give you an idea of um, the, the price range that we might be expecting for um, direct PPAs and third party PPAs. So um, the the so um, the energy agency auctioned um, early 2000, uh, early this year, um, a certain amount of green energy through the green uh, premium auction, and um, the 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 average award price of the green premium was um, fourteen point six Korean ones per kilowatt hour, and um, the 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 the. the the Korean government is also currently running um, a trial um, REC purchase uh, trial out. And um, through three rounds of these um, implemented implementation trials, um, we've seen a average price of 30,000 to 40,000 Korean won per megawatt hour. Uh, so you can kind of get an idea or you can get, you, you can kind of guess what you're supposed to expect when it comes to um, the add-on price that uh, the, the participants in the market would be expecting with regards to um, direct PPA or third-party PPA. Uh, the third-party, the details to the third-party PPA haven't been, um, haven't been prepared yet. 
So, and uh, the government is, we, we're, we've we been told that the government is preparing for the enforcement decree and the rules, which uh, would be needed to actually implement um, the third party PPA, including all the details um, that would be required. And also just to add, I, I, I can't, I don't really remember this was covered in the previous uh, presentation, but um, the government is also um, discussing on granting um, greenhouse emission reduction effort effort credits to 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 um, to purchasers of to to the participants of these different um, KRE 100 implementation implementation schemes or methods, except for the green premium, because they, because the government believes that that would uh, amount to a double counting if they, if they granted um, a um, greenhouse emission um, reduction credit to the greenhouse, uh, to the green premium. Um, can we move on to the next slide? Hello. Hello. Uh, can we move on to the next? Right. So uh, on the left um, is the third party or three party PPA um, regulations, which were enacted in the um, enforcement decree of the of the electrical of the electrical business act. And the reason and on the first of all, on the right is the um, do, are the provisions for the um, direct PPA, which are enacted directly in the um, electrical business electric electricity business law uh, electricity business act. And the reason uh, the government started out with the third party PPA was because they thought back then that um, um, revising or amending um, the electricity business law, which would require a, um, an act of parliament or an act of the National Congress to be difficult. They, they, back then they thought that they could start with a third party PPA, which would um, have, which would still have KEPCO as the intermediary, but would not require a, a, an amendment of the act itself. But um, luckily, what we've seen uh, recently this year was um, the final uh, legislation of the direct PPA. So um, in the future, we do not know exactly. I think at this point, we don't know how the two schemes might play out because um, as I just mentioned, uh, the third party PPA was, so the direct PPA wasn't expected to come into the framework uh, anytime soon. And that was why the third party PPA was being prepared. But now with the two, um, with the two schemes um, potentially competing with each other, that would be something that we would have to see in the future, how this plays out. Um, can we move on to the next slide? So, um, as I've just, uh, as I previously mentioned, um, the details of the third party PPA and the direct corporate PPA still needs to be, um, still needs to be decided and, enact, uh, and enacted or legislated by uh, the government agencies as delegated by um, the, the, the enforcement decree and the act that was in the previous uh, slide. So those details would cover um, the, 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 backup, um, the, the backup power and the backup supply and final supply responsibilities. And uh, most importantly, it would cover uh, curtailment. And uh, we'll get to that question in a second, but and more importantly, the, the thing, the, the issue that's being uh, very um, um, fervently discussed right now is the uh, network usage 
uh, fee or good connection cost that was mentioned in Mr. Chung's uh, presentation as well, because this would be the determining factor when it comes to the, um, the, the usage or the spread of corporate PPAs in Korea. And um, the reason for this is because back when I was in FINA and um, I believe a lot of the other um, in international or, or foreign players are, are thinking of this as well, but um, because RE100 is becoming a reality in Korea, you know, a lot of these different um, players are thinking about this very uh, intensively, of, about implementing this intensively, but the thing that's dragging them back is, or pulling them back is the price because uh, the buyers, especially the industrial buyers, because they are provided a very low electricity price at this point, um, they, we believe they do not uh, really, they're not really feeling, feeling the need to move in that direction as quickly as uh, the power producers would like. And uh, an example of this would be, for example, um, the, the price that we've been told at the price at which um, the buyers buy their electricity right now is around 100 Korean ones per kilowatt hour. And the add-on that they're expecting is something around um, the range that's uh, given in the, that, that's, that has resulted from the green premium Green premium auction, which would be, uh, if you remember that, which would be around um, the 10 to 20 ish scheme, uh, the 10 to 20 ish range. And um, ex aside from uh, the, um, aside from solar, the other types of renewables cannot produce or deliver or supply electricity at that cost. And even for um, solar, um, provide, supplying energy at that cost is almost impossible at this point, or that would require a very low um, profit rate or return rate. So um, this type of um, low or unattractive profitability of, that's supported by the current uh, price range of uh, the KRE 100 is actually what we believe, or I believe, is um, stopping uh, the players from going into this market or from the spread of RE hundreds in the market. And that, and um, this would definitely, or this, the critical point at this, the, the critical point in deciding whether uh, the 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 in whether PPAs will be spread uh, will be widespread in the future would uh, be, I believe. Um, the the network usage um, fee. Can we move on to the final slide? Hello. So, um, a few points or a few uh, measures that we can think of in order to spread or promote um, the usage of corporate PPAs in Korea would be, as I said, um, setting the uh, network usage fee at a reasonable range of price. That would not be burdensome to the electricity buyers. And also in order to, um, to, to increase or enlarge the pool of ele electricity, uh, consumers or um, demand in the uh, corporate PPA scheme would be to, um, to provide some sort of uh, credit reinforcement or some scheme to um, supplement the credit worthiness or the financial uh, credit rate of um, small or mid-sized companies. So they, they could be able to come into the market and provide bankability to the PPAs that they provide. And also, um, of course, um, in order to spread uh, corporate PPAs uh, beyond just solar, um, a measure or 
a means that one could think of would be to, to provide um, multipliers or weights as we do under the RPS scheme to um, a portion of the, uh, of the PPA price to uh, add economic sense to using or utilizing uh, corporate PPAs in offshore or onshore wind um, projects as well. Um, that wraps up uh, my presentation for uh, the session. I did it in a hurry, but okay. And thank you. And I think we can move on to the discussion. We still have time. Well, thank you, Mr. Even, for uh, for great uh, elaboration on the uh, on the on the legal framework in Korea. Um, let's see. Let's uh, let's start with our panel discussions. And uh, yeah, let me let me uh, start with maybe the first question uh, to you. Um, it, it it sounds like, in your opinion, even though Korea is moving in the right direction. Uh, it is not economically uh, attractive enough yet for investors. Uh, is, is is that a fair summary? Yes, that would be an accurate summary of yeah. my message. Uh, Mr. Guyun, do you do you agree? And 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 uh, I, I didn't see Korea on your map uh, for business development, unfortunately. So I'm curious to 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 hear your view on the market. Sure, Vincent. Actually, uh, it was not uh, full green, but it was light green, meaning uh, we are developing our own projects in our pipeline. Um, we haven't uh, started execution of our first project yet, but we're hoping to do so. Um, you know, we've, we've done this business in, in, in more than 20 countries. Uh, and, you know, Korea, as, as, as Ivan mentioned, is a very, say, challenging market. Um, it was mentioned about, you know, the, the difficulties in, in permitting and the high cost of land, the high, I mean, it's the highest cost of EPC that we've seen anywhere in the world. Um, and uh, I think it, it, it also ties to the fact that things are at its very early stages. So uh, taking the longer view, I'm a little bit more optimistic. Frankly, I don't think Korea has any other alternative but to make renewables work. Um, and I think, my, I mean, my, my suspicion is that some of that EPC uh, costs are, are baked into the model where it's tied to, to the pricing. So. Uh, we think there's a lot of uh, optimization that can be uh, that can be made both from the project side, but also from the development side. Uh, and then, in terms of the pricing side, also there needs to be some rationalization that was mentioned by Ivan. I mean, the Korean market has not seen this kind of dramatic changes that we've seen elsewhere uh, around the world. So, uh, rationalization needs to happen across all fronts. It's not going to be easy, but I'm 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 optimistic that it will happen. So what has uh, what has caused these imbalances? And uh, this is a question to to, to both of you. Uh, we know Korea outside of Korea. We know Korea for making the most advanced smartphones and building the most complex ships. Uh, yet uh, Korea still rely on the fossil fuel. Uh, we know Korea is a production powerhouse, but the EPC costs are immensely high. Uh, we know uh, we know Korea is heavily dependent on on LNG. And I used to work for Shell. I can tell you that's a very expensive fuel. Uh, yet the power prices for, for, for renewables are unattractive. Uh, what's going on here, gentlemen? I'll let, I'll take a, um, start. Uh, okay, I can start. Um, th there's a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is the power industry in Korea is basically stuck where it was in the 90s. So you just have a, basically a, a handful, really a handful of, of large players that have big power plants uh, and then we've got a lot of, 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 uh, of, of nuclear also. Uh, and so it's, it's been, a, it's been a, particularly the electricity generation industry has been a very sleepy uh, industry where nothing real has happened other than the fact that as long as they keep the lights on and as long as there's a lot of cross subsidy so that the people don't see the high rates so the costs are absorbed somewhere else, nobody complains. I mean, you've got the lowest retail rates in the world for residential, but also for, 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 for industry. And there's a lot of crop subsidies going on. Um, now, uh, all, all that cannot be sustained if you're gonna bring in renewables that are, are smaller, uh, that, that are you know, more modular, but there are more variable. And you know, so things need to change. The other thing that you mentioned, I mean, Korea is, is, is very good in manufacturing. 
and this is more of a philosophical question, but it was geared towards exports. Uh, Koreans have not been very good at, say, opening up its own industries for outside investment. Um, but I think this is I think this is slowly happening. I mean, there are foreign players uh, working in this space, also including us, including Vina. Um, so it's a learning experience. I think it's, it's a transition, as as a lot of people like to say these days, also in Korea. And I think it, it will it will continue. I don't know if that answers your question. In terms of high PC, it, it's really a mix. There really is a lot of cost involved with you know, you know, doing business in Korea is expensive, but I also think there is a lot of say margins or fat that is being taken by some industries that, 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 that can also change. Go ahead, Michelle, well, your, um, your opinion. Um, well, you know, I, I perfectly and fully agree with um, um, what Mr. Chung just said. And um, like, like he said, I, I do also believe that there's a lot of optimization that can go on and a lot of fat that can be removed. But and a lot of slimming that can be done. But also, um, from an investment uh, point of view, I, I think this might differ, you know, among the different investors or players because they would have different expectations or levels of profitability that they would aim at. But um, compared to other markets, um, I, I don't know. Uh, Mr. Chung might disagree in, on some part, some aspects of what I'm about to say, but. The quality of the resources, or for example, um, the the strength of the sunlight, or um, the 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 speed or the power of the wind, given in Korea, isn't as um, as good or as tempting to the other um, investors as you would as the resources you would see in say. Uh, Taiwan or some parts of Japan. So, uh, but despite, you know, this low quality or, you know, low par quality of the resources, um, the expectations that um, the local landowners have are very high. So there's a, and um, there's a lot of role that the local governments play. So they don't, you know, they don't budge if um, there's no community consent. And that this is, of course, this is a problem all around the world. But given you know the shortage of supplies in land, especially, or you know even sea areas where um, offshore renewables are developable, then you know given the shortage of the the, the supply of these um, basic um, components or resources. You know the price tends to keep on going up, and you know there's a lot of because of the uh, uh, population density, a lot of people or a lot of uh, people live around there or um, they are involved in some sort of um, commercial or, um, or some sort of activity in those areas like the fishermen. So, um, you know, this all, all, you know, these, these features or, you know, the, these, these realities, you know, keep on pu keep pushing up the price of the basic components of de developing uh, projects in Korea, especially large size projects. So um, I'd say there's uh, a mismatch between um, what the government is uh, between the government's ultimate goal, or you know, the eventual direction that Korea will have to move into, and what we're and the the expectations of um, the local governments and the local people. So, so I'd say that's kind of in line with uh, what Mr. Chung just said, but uh, that mismatch from my previous experience was, I'd say, one of the greatest difficulties. And um, that was one of the main reasons, um, you know, the, the spread of renewables were being hindered in Korea. So several uh, several challenges appears. Uh, the price is too low uh, for the power. The, the the EPC costs are too high, and uh, the local uh, people are uh, preventing you to do any business. Um, that that all sounds uh, sounds very difficult. Um, despite that, uh, Guyun, when do you uh, if you need to uh, put a stick in the ground? When do you think uh, Enol Green Power will have their first project operational in Korea? 
Uh, well, I don't want to jinx myself, Vincent, but it might actually be, <laughs> it might be as early as this year. I mean, um, we, um, so, you know, be, be, being an integrated utility helps because we, we, we work at different segments of the market. We actually entered Korea earlier through the demand response, which is an energy service that works on the demand side where you, where you uh, contract with corporate players with you know, the same kind of players that we're talking about today for corporate DPAs, where they uh, voluntarily agree through agreements, annual agreements to, 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 to reduce their load uh, for, 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 for payments. It's called the demand, demand response uh, um, system. So we're doing that. Uh, we are also moving into electric vehicle charging, for example. So the demand side energy services is also interesting. Uh, on, on the utility scale renewables, we also think uh, there is space. Um, we're looking at a couple of uh, onshore wind and solar. I mean, I agree that onshore wind is, is not probably the market that will take off into the gigawatts, but there are a handful of opportunities that do make sense. And it's less crowded than I would say solar is. And, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Ivan mentioned uh, resource. It's true that, you know, the, the solar resource uh, in, in, in Korea is not what you find, say, in, in, in Morocco or in the Nevada desert in the United States or Chile. Uh, but it is higher than Germany, where you've got gigawatts of solar installed. So it's really not a question of resource or whether it is a question of economics and when you can make your returns. There are different things that we can do that I think we might be slightly more competitive than our competitors, which is aggregating projects, looking at innovative financing, um, and changing some of the local EPC practices. For example, there's a lot of guarantees uh, and, and, and warranties that are shifted to, to the EPCs because that's how it was done in, in, the, in, in the current industry. But we're willing and we're open to taking some of that execution risk because we know how to, how to do it. And that can reduce costs, for example. Um, we're, we're talking to investors that want to invest with us because Korea is an OECD market that is perceived as low risk. So, you know, you can try to reduce your cost of financing. There's many levers that you can pull. It doesn't mean you'll be successful every time, uh, but you have to try to find the right mix to make it work. Now, one thing is for sure in Korea, in, in exception to offshore wind, is that, the, uh, is that the absolute project size per product is, is much smaller than what, you, than what we find, say, in Australia or in India, where an average project is 200, 300 megawatts. You'll never find a 200, 300 megawatt project in Korea, at least for, at least for wind. Solar maybe, but it's going to be exceptional. So you're looking at you know sub 50 megawatt projects. So you need to be able to find that right, uh, say optimal size, and try to work with a portfolio uh, to make it work. I, I agree with even it's not easy. I mean, Korea is a tough market, uh, but there should be ways to crack it because Korea needs it. And so you know it's 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 a, it's, a, it's eventually a supply and demand issue. If they're desperate enough, they will try to make it work. So you need to be ready. So it sounds like uh, we're waiting for the right incentives, uh, and uh, yeah, the, the 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 opportunities are there. Um, had the legal framework to we customers. Uh, it's something that uh, was the message about Vietnam until recently, yeah. and what Vietnam afterwards experienced was one of the biggest uh, uh, biggest booms in in solar industry in the world. Um, do you think? Do you uh, yeah, Vincent, I mean, in, in Vietnam, uh, that boom was was tied mainly to two things. One was on the feed-in tariff. And the other one, well, they're both feed-in tariffs. One was feed-in tariff for utility, one was feed-in tariff for, for, for rooftop. Their, their direct PPA scheme is, is, is being delayed for, I think, almost three years now. Very frustrating. Uh, but it's really imminent, what they tell me, their pilot scheme. And they're much far advanced in their regulatory preparations for launching this project. So we have a more, more or less an idea on what it's going to look like. Uh, and the corporates also have faith in that policy. So our global customers, the ones that we've already signed deals in, in the US or Australia or in Latin America, they're asking for us for, for, for projects in Vietnam for us to start quoting them on, on tariffs. So it's, it's I mean, it's, it's, it's happening. It's just a matter of when. Korea, I think we're still a couple of months away until we know whether uh, some of these regulatory schemes are going to be looking uh, like Vietnam or, 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 or anything else. But I would say there are already some of our global clients have, have also started to ask us about Korea. So that's, uh, that brings us back to the, the, the challenges that both of you brought up, right? The direct PPA or the, the third party PPA, it's seen as one of the ones with, uh, that, that, that leads to the most liquid market. Uh, it has participation from all. 
uh, it's also not yet completely in place. Um, Even can I ask you, what are the three uh, biggest legal issues that uh, that Korean uh, uh, deals have compared to maybe other countries around us? Well, um, if you leave aside um, the corporate PPA, um, because Korea would be, you know, Korea belongs to an RPS uh, market, which means that we implement an RPS scheme. So, um, and we have the concept of RIC. So you're supposed to make money out of, you're supposed to make money by selling um, S&Ps and RECs. And um, the, the biggest challenge, of course, this depends on the developer or the nature, or, or you know, the, the nature of the investment that the developers are making. But um, the, the biggest challenge that we, well, Vino is, Vino was, or I believe other investors were facing was the fact that um, the, the, the tariff was decided at the last moment of the development um, because um, I believe in feed-in tariff countries, um, the, the price or the tariff is decided upfront. And so you can develop uh, the rest of the project at ease. But um, in Korea, because the price came last and the weight came even later at, at the final moment, just before um, COD, the, the investment model, you know, people were having difficulties fixing the investment model. And um, this was pulling them back from making um, larger um, investments into the projects. So that would be, I'd say, um, the first and foremost uh, legal challenge or legal differences between uh, the countries around us. And then um, I don't know if it's something that um, sets us aside from the countries around us, but um, compared to Australia or um, the US, you know, the the, the market is uh, fairly much more. I, I don't know how it's like exactly in Australia or the US, it's, but it's more regulated and it's more, um, it's, it's more dominated by, it's more monopolized, especially by KEPCO. And although um, through the corporate PPA, we might um, expect to see KEPCO moving out of the picture a bit, um, still uh, with the third party PPA and the, um, with, with, and the, uh, Grid connection or uh, network usage fee, uh, they still have a big say. And also because they operate the, the grid, you know, in, in Korea, we, we still don't have a physically or a physical direct PPA. And we don't know if that will ever, ever become possible in Korea. But because, the, because KEPCO is the operator of the national grid, they, they have a very strong say in all the operations of all the operations of these different projects and power plants. So that would be another thing to consider. Okay, and Maybe one short third, uh, third difference. Yeah, so I'll, I'll keep it short. So in Korea, um, another difference I've been seeing is for offshores, we didn't have auctions yet. In Taiwan and in Japan, I think uh, they they designate um, C areas and they auction it out to um, potential developers. But in Korea, we didn't have that yet, so everybody was scrambling around the sea to, as you put uh, as you uh, put it, put put a stick in the water, because that gave them um, um, exclusive exclusive rights for a period of time over a certain area of the sea, sea surface. So that was what we've been seeing in the past. We don't know if it will change, but because, but, but that's also something that would kind of set Squat, aside- Squatting on licenses, yes. more to say it yes. uh, a bit blunt. Yes. And them selling you know, these rights yeah. for, at a premium. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Now we're reaching the end of the time that we have for this discussion, uh, but uh, I'm not going to let you off uh, easily uh, with the risk of uh, jinxing yourself. I have two questions for both of you. Uh, the first question is, if you have a magic wand and you can change one thing in the Korean uh, PPA structure today, uh, what would it be? And the second question is, 
I want you to make one bold prediction that when we come together in one year's time, we can see whether it happened or not. Who, to, who likes to start? Well, I, I think go. Mr. Chung. Okay. Um, well, not so much one thing that I would like to see in the PPA because there's too many to, to choose from. <laughs> But it actually, uh, I would say one starting point is we need to see some uh, reliable signals from the market. I mean, we need to have a functioning market that serves its uh, uh, original purpose to discover costs, just to, to discover prices. And that we just don't have. I mean, it's, it's a cost-based pool system where big generators bid into the, uh, in, into the, into the Korea uh, power pool, it's called the KPX. Uh, a day ahead, and the government, you know, takes all the information about about these fuel costs, and, and then they come up with a number, and that's the price. And you know, no. Okay, so I mean, the, have... your your magic wand uh, thing will be a a a, a pricing, um, a, a transparent and predictable pricing mechanism. And it's not an exotic thing; it's what everybody else is doing in the world. Okay, right? so and your bold prediction for one year time: where, where, where's the Korean market? How many megawatts? Or what? What do you want to? No, my, my my bold prediction, well, my, my my bold wish, is that we'll have this you know price discovery mechanism finally introduced in the Korean market, some way or another, and then it has okay. to happen if we're going to make this DPPA work. Okay, so by uh, April next year, we'll check if there's a reliable price uh, discovery. Whether it's for energy, whether it's to introduce ancillary services, whether it's to have real-time dispatch, you know, whatever it is, something has Great. to happen. All right, thank you. Uh, even your, uh, your, your, your magic wish and your prediction. Yeah, sure. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. Chung. And, um, you know, the, 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 the one, the most important thing missing right now in the Korean market when it comes to PPA price would be predictability and foreseeability. And that's what's pulling all these projects back. And uh, so I would like to see something like a fit or some sort of mechanism that would allow the developers to be able to, that would allow the uh, participants uh, to be able to predict in a reasonable way the price that they would be able to receive when they're done uh, with the development and start operating. And with that, I, I think, you know, we can pull up, I don't know how many gigawatts or megawatts, but I think we can pull up the percentage to something that would be on par with, um, you know, the, 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 the more sophisticated or more developed countries. I don't know if it's Germany, <laughs> but that's what we're aiming at, right? So, so how many percent of renewable energy will Korea have next year, end of next year? 15, without, 20. Without my magic wand? Yes. <laughs> my magic wheel? Well, I, I, don't, I don't see a big uh, raise or increase in the percentage. So, um, I don't know, 2 3% up. 